I'm Spencer Mazik, and joining me now are lawyers turned curators of craft spirits, Moise Ali and Stephen App. They are the founders of Caskers, a website that curates, markets, and makes available for sale craft spirits. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for Thank having you. us. So tell us about Caskers. What can people expect to find when they visit the website? Yeah, so people can um, expect to find a, uh, a range of small batch whiskeys, vodkas, rums, liqueurs, basically a lot of different spirits that aren't available at your local liquor store that you probably haven't heard of and that might not be available anywhere else in the world. Um, we work with distillers, we work with mixologists, we work with industry experts to curate just amazing craft spirits that are being distilled, not only in the United States, but really across the world. And Steve, isn't there also a story posted with each selection? That's exactly right. So these, these distillers have really interesting stories, and when you go into a liquor store, if you do find this product available for sale, you don't really get anything other than to look at the bottle. So what we do is we tell you the story behind the bottle, how the product is made, who's making it, where it's made, why it's so interesting, what makes it special and great. I think that's so cool because not only are you guys providing customers with access to great selected craft spirits, but you're also providing greater exposure for distilleries, right? That's exactly right. So we have really strong relationships with, with distilleries because a lot of them are very small and they focus entirely on producing the product as, as good a product as they possibly can. Um, at the end of the day, they don't have a lot of time or a lot of money left over to market and to get their story out, but they want people to know what they're doing. They want people to taste this because they're really proud of their products. Um, so we make that happen. So whose idea was it? How did you come up with the idea for what is essentially a logistics company? Sure. Um, we actually came up with the idea back when we were in law school. At least that's where we started coming up with it. Um, Steve and I would travel for interviews as lawyers to big cities such as Chicago, to LA, to Miami, and we'd sample different small batch spirits being made in those cities. And when we met, went back to law school in Boston, we'd find that those spirits weren't available at our local liquor store or at local bars. Um, so we both graduated law school and became lawyers for about two and a half years in New York City. Um, and during the entire time that we were lawyers, we were bouncing around different business start startup ideas that we had. Um, and then finally, the uh, beginning of last year, the beginning of 2012, we left our jobs so we could uh, found Caskers. Now that's interesting, though. So you came up with the idea in law school. I imagine it was joint a joint effort then, yes. <laughs> probably over a bottle of whiskey or something. Yeah. <laughs> and um, but then you didn't then say, okay, well, after law school, I'm going to jump into the startup. You both went on to practice at law firms, like you said, Moyes. You were at Simpson Thatcher, Steve. You were at Wachtell. But why didn't you just kind of jump into the startup after graduation from law school? Uh, so there's a couple things. So with the idea for Caskers, it was sort of forming when we were in law school. We had the, the uh, you know, the aha moment of why can't we get these spirits and what can we do about it. Um, and then over the next couple of years, we sort of refined it, and it was not really our heavy focus. And you know, we weren't sure if there was a company there. Um, and then of course, law school's expensive. Being a lawyer is kind of lucrative. Um, <laughs> st starting a found up, is, uh, starting a startup is not for a while. Um, so we wanted to save some money so that we could have um, something to fall back on and also um, have the money to start the, to start Caskers. Um, so after about two and a half years, we thought this was the time, now or never, let's do it. And I have to ask you, at the time that you left the law firm, did either of you had to worry about repaying any student loans? Um, yeah. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so but that, that was a concern, but you still thought, okay, let me make the leap anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it was now or never. We were young, we were single, we um, didn't have many major expenses, we didn't have a mortgage or a family to support. So we knew that it was uh, the perfect time to start a startup in our lives if we were ever going to do it. And um, I think both of us knew that we wanted to be entrepreneurs and not lawyers, probably back in law school even. Um, but there was the inertia pushing us to finish law school and then the inertia pushing us to New York to become lawyers. And finally, after two and a half years, we had had enough and had summoned the, or were able to summon the courage to leave our jobs. What about your family and friends? Were they supportive at first or did they think you guys were crazy, Steve? Uh, our friends to a, to a person were very, very supportive and <laughs> often jealous. Um, so when they're, when they're working at the office at two in the morning on you know, a doc review or something, we'll frequently get emails saying, you guys are the smartest people. <laughs> um, my, uh, our families, I think, were generally supportive as well. Uh, my dad's a lawyer, so it was a bit, uh, it was a bit of a shock to him at first. Um, but as they see how we're doing, they're, they're all happy for us, and they know that we um, we work just as hard as we worked as lawyers, but we have a lot more control over our lives and we're working for ourselves and they see that it makes us a lot happier. Um, 
So I, I think, at least on my side, I was going to say, Moise, how about for you? Yeah, I come from a family of entrepreneurs. Um, my parents have been entrepreneurs their entire lives. My brother was at Microsoft for about two years, and he left to start his own startup in San Francisco. So when I was a lawyer, they were actually pushing me to quit, asking why I was still there for two and a half years. So actually, they were, they were incredibly supportive of me leaving my legal job. All right, so it hasn't been a year since you launched Caskers in June 2012, but uh, you guys have already seemed to generate over a million dollars in revenue. So can you break it down for us and tell us how do you generate revenue? Yeah, so it starts obviously with having really good products. So we get great products and feature them. Um, and just generating new users every day is obviously the key to, to continued growth. Um, so we're offering really good values on really good products. Um, and with word of mouth, we've had a ton of um, members invite other uh, invite their friends to become other members, um, which is self. So this is this self-sustaining growth, and uh, the good products that people keep buying, and we've got many many repeat purchasers. Many have purchased dozens of times, which has seemed crazy to us. But after six months, we've had several people order 25, 30 plus times. Um, so the revenue the revenue follows from that. But so do you get a cut of the do the proceeds from the sale or, or do the members pay a membership? I mean, how do you generate revenue? So membership is completely free and it'll always be free. Um, the reason that we started a membership site was um, because we wanted to make sure that we had enough inventory um, as we were inviting new members into into uh, onto caskers. So small batch spirits by definition are made in small quantities. So if we had a million members on day one and these small these small batch spirits were only making a few bottles, we would quickly run out of inventory. Um, so we wanted to create a membership site to make sure that we could control the ebbs and flows of our inventory, um, especially at the beginning when we really didn't know how it was going to work out. Now that we've been around for about a year, we're going to open up our site to a lot more people. Um, and but, but, but going back to the revenue question, reven uh, membership is free, but we take a cut from each sale, just like an ordinary retailer would. And I, I say you say inventory, though, but I mean, you guys also haven't, like some startups, you haven't sought any funding. Um, and is that because you actually don't keep the inventory? That's right. We don't keep any inventory. Um, we, haven't, we haven't found a need for funding yet just because our overhead is incredibly low and we've been able to generate such significant revenue so quickly. Um, that said, we think we will raise a round um, in the future simply so we can do more uh, user acquisition, um, expand our team quickly, and just try and scale the company as quickly as possible. So tell me about this membership by invitation only thing. Was that done to create hype, buzz, or prestige? You mentioned a little bit of, about it earlier in terms of controlling the number of folks, but is that the real reason? Yeah, absolutely. Like uh, when we launched originally, we um, the first day that we launched, we ended up getting about two or three thousand members, um, and at that time, we didn't we totally didn't expect uh, that that much demand on the consumer side. And at the time, we uh, had worked with our fulfillers, and they had allocated about fifty bottles of different products to us. On day one, we basically sold out of everything as soon as we got these two or three thousand members. And then we realized, okay, we've got a significant problem here. We have to make sure that we can get products. Where there's a significant amount of inventory and we have to control our membership inflow. So we created this invitation system to make sure that we could always have that control. Um, but as we've had more experience doing this now, we've almost been doing it for about eight months now, um, we've come to realize how much inventory we'll need. We know what products are going to sell really well and what products will do well, but not as great as others. And so as a result, we're going to be taking down this membership by invite only. Well, it'll still be a membership site. It just won't be a membership by invite. Okay. You'll just be able to register immediately. So that means that anybody can just sign up for it if they want to. Exactly. Well, that's great. I, I think that's awesome. So Steve, how do you discover new and interesting spirits? And then once you discover them, how do you guys decide which ones to feature on the site? That's a great question. Uh, so when we started, it was things that we knew and liked and things that we had seen in our travels and our visits to bars and stuff. Um, as we started Caskers, as we started Caskers, we started going to in uh, industry events and meeting distillers and trying everything we can possibly try. Um, and then as soon as we launched, we started getting contacted immediately by other distillers wanting to be featured on Caskers. So we talk with them, we work with them, we sample their products, and then it's just a question of value and, and taste. So if it's a product that we really like at a compelling value to our users, to our members rather, we'll feature it. If it's not, then we're not going to feature it. It sounds like you guys taste everything, so that must make for a very interesting work environment. Yes. What you say. <laughs> yes. There are a lot of spirits all over our office. In fact, Steve's <laughs> desk and my desk are overflowing with spirits. We can I can barely find my keyboard at times. Sometimes um, can't see each other. <laughs> yeah. And so how often do you add new spirits to the site? On, yeah. a, on a daily basis, yeah. Do you guys service all of America, <laughs> every state, or are there some states that are left out because of their restrictive shipping laws? Yeah, we service uh, generally between 40 and 45 states. 
Um, and there are there are some states that are sort of have the draconian shipping laws uh, related to alcohol that we just can't get into. The big ones are Texas and Massachusetts. Massachusetts, ironically, since the idea for this came from a lack of good spirits in Massachusetts. <laughs> but uh, you know, as we get bigger, hopefully we can work with uh, legislatures and SLA boards across the country and and get everything up to the 21st century. How do you use your legal background, or how have you used your legal background and training for the company, Moise? Sure, so um, as Steve was mentioning a second ago, there's a lot of laws connected with um, shipping spirits and with having spirits, with distilling spirits. So being a lawyer certainly helped in navigating those laws. Um, I mean, we had the idea back for, uh, for Caskers, you know, back in law school, but uh, in 2011, before we even left our jobs, we started looking at the laws and contacting distilleries, starting to create a network in, in, in that environment, and being a lawyer in that respect certainly helped. And then, you know, starting a, starting the company, you want to do formation documents. You have to do an LLC agreement or a, you know a, a partnership agreement. Um, so being lawyers there again certainly helped. Do you not do you not have an outside counsel then for that? We don't have an outside counsel. Uh, I, Steve and I were both corporate lawyers, so <laughs> well, I, don't know know yeah, I don't know how much an outside counsel could really tell me about a partnership agreement. <laughs> Steve, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, that's that's pretty much that's how we use our lawyers, and also. The other advantage, obviously, is that we have something to fall back on. So it made the leap from our previous jobs a little bit safer. Not so risky. Not, quite as, not quite as big a leap, yeah. Well, and the other thing that you can say is, but for law school, you would not have come up with this idea. So. Sure, <laughs> exactly. Sure. <laughs> well, I want to say good luck with everything, guys. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks for having Thank us. You. For more information on this or other topics, subscribe to BloombergLaw.com. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you for joining us. Bye, everybody. Thanks for having us.